Hi, everybody. Welcome to this presentation about From Camel to Camelets, New Connectors for Event-Driven Applications. My name is Nicola Ferraro. I work as Principal Software Engineer for uh, Red Hat. And um, this is my Twitter handle, ni underscore Ferraro. I often tweet about Apache Camel, Camel K, and Camelets, which is the topic of this presentation. Uh, I work also on Red Hat integration, and I have contributed a bit to um, Knative by creating Apache Camel-based uh, sources recently. Um, this is what I want to talk to you today. Um, in the first part, I will talk about camelets. I will show you how they can be used. It's really easy to use them, and I will show you various ways to use them uh, on uh, Kubernetes on, and in the OpenShift console, which is uh, just a different version of Kubernetes. In the second part, I will tell you how to write your own camelets. If you are a bit familiar with Apache Camel, uh, you can write your own. You can contribute to the uh, Apache catalog. Um, to use camelets, this is a great news. You don't need to know anything about Apache Camel. If you just uh, don't know anything about Apache Camel, there are any um, other presentation, even at ApacheCon, uh, for example, the one from Andrea Cosentino and Klaus Ibsen, who talk a lot about um, Apache Camel, and you see also some introduction about that. In this presentation, I can also assume that you don't know anything about Apache Camel, just you need to know that. Apache Camel is the Swiss knife of integration. It can uh, connect many, many, many systems, um, many different systems. Uh, it has components that connect everything. And it also has enterprise integration pattern that allows people to integrate system quite easily. Apache Camel has various sub projects that have been created in the recent years. Uh, for example, um, Camel Spring Boot, Camel Caraf, but also the recent uh, Camel Quarkus, Camel Camelets, which is uh, also the, the latest subproject, and Camel K, which is also a really, really cool subproject of Apache Camel for running Camel integration on Kubernetes and OpenShift. Um, Camelets. Recently, we have created into the Apache Camel website a catalog of connectors. Connectors are in the form of sources and sinks, as we will see. Uh, and they allow to connect systems like, okay, yeah, I want to bring data from S3 to my cluster, to my um, uh, environment, or take data from your environment and put that on, on Dropbox or another uh, Amazon SQS or whatever you want. So in the catalog that we publish on Apache, there are connectors for everything. The catalog is open, and I will tell you in the second part of this presentation how to contribute to the um, catalog. So why we have created um, these camelets? Camelets can be used even without any knowledge about Java or Apache Camel. So the reasons are mainly three. So today um, the world is even driven. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of organizations are starting using Kafka or Pulsar or Knative as they backbone for connecting all the applications, the systems that are uh, present in their organization, even other um, messaging systems as a service. Java is not the only programming language for backend. It is, of course, not a programming language for front-end, <laughs> but there are, there are other many programming languages that people nowadays use, like Go, like Rust. Uh, like Python for machine learning, uh, often or not JS if they want. A few people also that are familiar with Java can understand and be proficient with Apache Camel currently. So these are the three reasons, but that uh, brought us to create this concept of Camelas because. Anybody in the world will love to have the integration capabilities of Apache Camel, but a few people can understand how it works. So Camelets are, are really a simplification. So this is mainly the mechanism that we, Apache Camel developers, uh, expert developers, create these packages called Camelets that are connectors that anybody uh, can use can consume it. They can pick a camelet and then use that to bring that into their system or to external systems uh, from their system. And this is the, the mechanism. So the schema is almost this one. Uh, expert, 
camel developer like Andrea Cosentino mainly uh, um, create camelets and then each camelet that uh, he creates but this can be also you it's not only Andrea Cosentino that creates the camelets um, the camelets can be published on the camelet catalog and uh, once it's in the camelet catalog it appears on the website and any kind of developer even Mark Amil um, alias Luke Skywalker, who doesn't know anything about Apache Camel, can go to the catalog, pick a Camelot, and then bind, this is the right word, bind a Camelot to a destination. For example, bind a S3 Camelot to a Kafka topic to bring data from S3 to Kafka, or to Knative, or to whatever they use in their environment. And they do it declaratively. They don't need to understand anything about Apache Camel. They, most important work has been done by Apache Camel developers. They just need to use that. So Camelets can be divided into three, um, not just two, three packets. So there are sources. For example, AWS SQS source can bring data from AWS SQS queue uh, into your own platform that can be based on Kafka or Canadian or whatever you want or Pulsar. Things like the Dropbox things can pick data from your platform, like like a native channel, and create for each event a file on Dropbox. Actions are camelets that can be used in as intermediate steps, like PDF action can transform an event into a PDF file, for example, before saving it to Dropbox. So these are the three kinds of camelets that are available in the catalog that you can also contribute um, yourself. How to use these camelets? Oh, there are many ways to use camelets. Many of them are, there are many way, new ways to use camelets that are now uh, emerging, like using them in JBang. There is a presentation at Pesci on Asia from Tadayoshi that will also show something about that. There is this concept called camelet main that can be used also to run camelets. But the easiest way to have camelets running in your system is with camel K. Camel K um, is a way to bring uh, camel on, inside uh, Kubernetes and uh, OpenShift. And actually, camelets were born in the context of camel K initially, and they are moving in the, um, the old camel ecosystem. So, but using camelets inside camel K is really, really easy. And I will show you how to do. So, just to know anything, something about um, camel K, camel K is an operator that can be installed on any Kubernetes cluster or OpenShift. Uh, it uses the features of Kubernetes and augment Kubernetes with new custom resources like Camelet. Camelet is a Kubernetes custom resource uh, other than being a file that can be shared uh, in the catalog. Camelet binding to bind a Camelet to a destination as we will see in the demo and integration, which is a genetic resource um, that, is, uh, that can um, be used by expert Camel developer to create complex integrations. Camel K can also use Knative if it's installed on the cluster. Knative is a project that brings serverless building blocks on top of Kubernetes. And when I say serverless, I, um, I, I mean the possibility for um, your integrations to scale down to zero, for example, when they are not used, or to scale up automatically to multiple instances when they are used a lot, uh, together with uh, some um, custom resource for event-driven applications. And this is what we are talking about today, event-driven applications. So Kinetive is really, really cool. I will show you um, this in action. So I will show the camelets in action before uh, doing uh, uh, creating our own camelets. So we'll do this simple uh, uh, integration. I will create first a Telegram sync, as you will see in the demo. So um, I will create a channel, like a native channel, which is like a Kafka topic where you can put events and uh, release them for events. There will be a sync that will transfer data into a Telegram chat. Um, there will be also another sync that I will create with another command to just log the content of the messages that flow in this channel. And then I will attach a source that will take tweets from Twitter and bring them into that uh, 
a channel. And in these bindings, we're going, we're going to create three bindings. We are going to do also some transformations um, because data can also be transformed with other camelets declaratively. So let's go. Okay, let's see a Kubernetes cluster. So this is a cluster that I created um, uh, a few days ago. And in any Kubernetes cluster, in like this OpenShift cluster in particular, there is the operator hub. This is available only on OpenShift and not by default on Kubernetes, but there are many ways to install CamelK also on Kubernetes. If you look for Camel in the operator hub, there is this CamelK operator which uh, provides latest version that is 1.5.0. You can install it globally or you can install it on a specific namespace like Apache Con Demo, which is a namespace that I've created previously, and where I've also run um, some, some integrations. Um, so this is going to install the camel key operator locally, and this will not take uh, so much. Okay, uh, this is going to install the, de the deployment and the pod, which consists of the camel key operator and also the custom resources. If you click on view operators, uh, you will see that these are the custom resources that are provided by CamelK and Camelets are custom resources. So you see here a list of Camelets that are all in phase ready and they correspond to the Apache catalog. I don't know if you have seen it live, but if you go to apachecamel.org, there is a link to this Camelet catalog that provides um, all the um, camelets that are uh, available like AWS CloudWatch metrics or um, many others. And those are available uh, also on OpenShift when you install the CamelK operator. There are other custom resources, camel binding integration as I was uh, saying before. Okay, let's switch to the developer view. And in developer view, you have a simplified uh, view uh, for developers to create uh, integration. And in this view, I can create also a channel. And this is a kinetic channel, which by default is an in-memory channel, which means that if you stop everything, you will lose messages, but there are many other channel types. Let's call these messages and create it in this clean space. Okay, this is called messages. I want to create, first of all, a sync from this messages channel to um, the Telegram chat. The Telegram chat is this one. Um, this is connected to the Camel K boat. Um, and I would like to send messages to this chat in particular. So what I go, what I need to do is to look for Telegram in the catalog. And there is a Telegram sync, which has some properties like authorization token and chat ID. Uh, which are mandatory. And there is an example of using this Telegram sync. So let's create this on an ID or any, any other place. So let's call this channel to telegram.yaml. Okay, let's uh, continue calling it channel to telegram. And then this starts from this channel, which belongs to Knative, and the channel is called messages. You see, the binding is made of a source and a sync. The source is the channel. The sync is this camelet called Telegram sync. We need to provide an authorization token. I have saved um, those here in a text file. And this is the chat ID that I want to contact that correspond exactly um, to this chat, this specific chat on, on my laptop and also on my uh, computer. What I need to do after I've created this camel binding, which is which contains the information about binding a channel to a specific sync, I use kubectl apply minus f and the name of this uh, file channel to telegram.yam. Uh, once I hit enter, enter, this camel binding is going to be uh, created on my cluster. Um, yes, it's being created. The cluster is remote. This is why uh, there is some throttling. Um, okay, you see it here. The visualization is not perfect, but um, this uh, sync has been translated into a Kinetic service that has scaled up to one instance at the moment. But if we are not pushing any message into this channel, this will scale down to zero. 
Okay, this is a way to create um, a binding, but there are other ways. For example, we provide in Camel K this Camel um, uh, CLI that you can see here. It does many commands like bind, debug. Okay, the, the, com the command that I want to run is Camel bind. I can type something like this Camel bind channel messages, which is the name of the channel to, for example, log sync, which is the name of a camelet that is available on this name space. If I just watch the YAML, um, you see here in the terminal that this has created the camelet binding, which has a source, as source, the messages channel, which has been looked up from the CLI. And as sync, it's using the log sync. Uh, camelet in this namespace. So if I just remove the YAML, uh, this will create the same thing as um, you have created manually here, the camelet binding. I can also watch um, the integration that I'm running in the cluster here and this view, and I can also watch also um, follow the logs uh, to see what, what's running inside the cluster. You see here that, okay. This has started, but there is no messages at, at the moment. This is an extension of VS Code um, that is, has been specifically designed for Camel K and can be installed by anyone. Okay, uh, the last thing that we need to do is just to refactor a bit this visualization, and then we create a source for Twitter. How do we do this? Let's use the third method. We can create sources directly from the OpenShift console. So create even source. And since the camelots are installed in this namespace, I can look for Twitter, and there are Twitter dark messages, um, timeline, but I want to use the Twitter search uh, source that allow me to just search for specific keywords on Twitter. So OpenShift will present me a form. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to edit YAML here. I just uh, will uh, present a form uh, fill a form with the data from uh, uh, the developer portal from Twitter. I can uh, just specify, for example, uh, API key, API key, and secret. So API key, let's copy this and put this here in the API key. And then API secret. Sorry, API secret. And then Okay, I've saved them. I need to also do the access token and the secret. So this is the access token. Access token. And the access token secret. Yes, this one, the last uh, uh, property that I want to uh, fill is the keyword that I want to search for. So for example, Apache um, Camel. Okay, I haven't done everything right, I need to do a step back because when I created these um, camelot binding from the messages channel to the Telegram sync, um, I didn't um, do it right because uh, what I expect to have in this uh, channel is some JSON data that the Twitter camelot will generate. So before going into the Telegram sync, I need to do some transformations. And doing that is easy. There are also transformations here, and there is a transformation which is called extract field. You can read the documentation that basically it requires a field. And if it works out of the box, if you uh, produce um, JSON data, for example, and then, okay, you can just put this step here to extract a field called, for example, text, we can reapply uh, the channel to telegram binding, and this will work correct. So instead of printing inside telegram the JSON data, it will extract the field called text uh, from uh, Twitter. So let's go back to the form. Okay, I can hit create. If you go, I fill the form to create sources from uh, a source from Twitter, but if you go into the YAML view, you see that we are creating a camelot binding, even if we have filled a form. The destination is the channel called messages. So let's hit um, create, and we will see a source coming here. 
that is starting right now. Um, okay, this okay, this is starting up because because this source is starting to print some uh, uh, to to send some messages, and we should see messages here. So Fred up to developer Camel plus J Bang and Octavio tweeting about Apache Camel uh, today. So these are some tweets. If you go into this uh, other integration about logs, you will see that some JSON data has been produced. And uh, yes, this is the JSON data. And there is a field called text that we have extracted in the other uh, integration so that in Telegram we receive only the extracted values. OK, if the no other camel tweets are coming, these two integration both, uh, they are scaling down uh, to, to zero. OK, uh, let's go back to the presentation and continue the journey about uh, camels. We have created um, this, this scenario. OK, there are also complex use cases involving camelets. So if you are an expert camel developer and you want to write routes, camelets are also a way to encapsulate complex processing inside a kind of component. So camelets can be used in URI, like from camelet earthquake source of two camelet telegram sync. And so this can be a way when you are in an enterprise to just wrap your own logic to do a series of steps and wrap them inside the camelet that you can embed in other integrations if you're an expert camel developers. Uh, but I've shown you all this simple way to use camelets, which is also really powerful. Let's see how camelets are made inside. Okay, camelets are YAML file. I've not shown you a camelet, but I will show it shortly. This YAML file contains basically two sections, um, a configuration schema written in JSON schema way. Why this is needed? Because you have seen on OpenShift that I've created a camelet binding by filling a form. That form was generated by this JSON schema. And so it knows which properties are required with the description of each property that you need to provide. So that form has been created from the schema so that you can create graphically a uh, camelot binding. So you can bind the camelot to a destination graphically. The second part of the camelot is the route template. Of course, camel needs to know how to transform those property values into something that is running. So the route template is where you provide this information in the form of a camel route template. This is uh, um, uh, something that has been added in camel 3.5 and it is used uh, inside uh, the camel. So let's see, let's see an example. Okay. So uh, this is the Dropbox sync. The Dropbox sync contains on the left-hand side, you don't need to read everything here, but just uh, something. It contains a spec definition, which is the JSON schema part. It has a title, Dropbox syncs, a description, a list of required fields, and then for each one of them, the title, the description, and the type, and also other uh, uh, graphical um, information. On the right hand side, you have the route template. And the route template is just a route written in YAML DSL, um, which is not complete. It can have um, uh, some missing pieces, like the starting point is the camelet source, which means whatever you put before this. So you can connect the Dropbox things to whatever comes uh, before. It's not written in stone, it just, it's, it's just a template. And then you can plug that to any kind of source. Okay, and then you use standard camel uh, URI or even uh, um, this exploded version of the URI. Uh, the properties that I've uh, declared in the left-hand side, they are used as properties placed over on the right-hand side, like access token, remote path, client identifier, and so on. So this is why it's also a template because properties are provided at runtime. Writing camelets may be complex. There is an example on the developer guide about writing a really, really, really complex camelet that um, takes all the events of earthquakes happening around the world and tell you the location, the, the magnitude, and the, all the information uh, about that in JSON format. This camelet uses it inside the camel timer, camel HTTP, camel caffeine. So, Camelets do not need to use just a single component. They are route templates. It uses also split, JSON path, a lot of things. But 
from the perspective of an application developer that just needs to know which earthquakes are happening around the world, they can just type in the command line camel bind earthquake source to channel events. Stop. They will get inside K native all the information about earthquakes and don't need to care about um, the internals of how that camelet is made. And this is really, really, really cool. Even Luke Skywalker can use it. So now we are going to write our own camelet. I will tell you how to do it. And uh, OK, this is what we are going to do. We'll create our own camelet. We will use it in the OpenShift console and contribute also at the end to the upstream catalog. This is what I would like everyone that knows Apache Camel to do with camelets. OK, let's go and create our own camelets. So how do we start? OK just the use case. Uh, there is this uh, random data API.com website that contains some uh, information, there are some APIs that can be contacted. And I've seen before, uh, I don't know if you like peer, I like peer. Um, I would like to create uh, something with this endpoint that um, produces random beers in JSON data. You see here the name for a pistol. This is a French beer probably. Okay, uh, how do we use this? Um, let's create a Camel K integration. You can create it even with the VS Code extension. If you create a new Apache Camel integration file, for example, in YAML, uh, in this director, let's call this test, just to um, test, uh, because this is a test actually. <laughs> okay, we start from URI timer, YAML, yes. Um, Every second, let's do it every five seconds. We do a series of steps. If you don't understand Apache Camel, just follow the logic here. We go to this URL to get um, something. We set um, the header called content type to the constant, constant value application. Oh my God, Jason, well, just convert a body to Java lang string and then uh, to log info, info. Okay, I've created this simple integration. I can run it with camel k, camel run um, test.yaml. Let's use uh, the dev mode. So I see what's happening here. And you see that beers in JSON format are uh, retrieved every five seconds from that. So we've created basically a source, but this source ends in a log info. Um, so what I want to do now is to convert this to a camelet. So let's generate a scaffolding for a camelet. Camel init beer source.camelet.yaml. And this creates for me a beer source camelet that contains information about uh, the beer. So I can customize this uh, beer. It's the title produces periodic events uh, about beers. I can customize this definition. There are no required um, properties. There is a property called period, yes, uh, that we set by default on five seconds. My suggestion is not present. The media type is application JSON. So let's just customize this. And this is the URL, uh, the uh, camel route that is provided by default. I can replace this with the test one that I've created before. And Okay, just customize this a bit. This is the right indentation. From timer, let's call this timer beer. Every five seconds, but we can use the parameter called the period here. Go to this uh, URL, set the content type application JSON. You don't need to convert the body to Java line string. You just, instead of ending up with log info, let's use the placeholder, camelet sync. That means whatever will be the destination, the final destination of this camelet, uh, it will receive some beer. 
So it's just a placeholder. So this is almost complete. In order to create a, a final camel, you, you can go, for example, in the Apache Camel website or on, on, on GitHub where we uh, provide um, camelets. I think Chrome has stopped. Okay, and let's let's see the AWS Kinesis Sync Camelot. For example, it has some other annotations that are useful. For example, they contain um, icon that um, we can use. We can also put here in our peer source. Let's remove this um, icon, which is for uh, AWS. Um, let's move the group which is not important. We can provide a um, icon also for uh, this. Uh, for example, uh, we can use this uh, website uh, that can generate um, URI for icon. And I've created the I've downloaded a beer SVG icon that can be converted into a URI. And what I need to do is to just put this here. And this will be the icon of my uh, camera. What I can do with this. Okay, let's save it. I can kubectl apply this file called beer source camelet. And once this is created inside OpenShift, uh, we should be able uh, to see it in the developer console. So if we go here and we create um, an other event source, among the event source that are available, we should see our own event source, uh, which starts with B. Okay, B or source, you see it here. And we can create an event source from our own camelet. And you see that the uh, period for polling the API can be configurable. It, it is set to 5,000 milliseconds. The destination is the messages um, channel. We can create this as it is, um, but we can also normalize the format to make sure that we generate data like the other camelet, which was the, the, the Twitter camelet. In order to do so, we need to extract the field again which in this case, the field in which it is contained, the name of the peer is called um, name, not text. And we can use another uh, action, which is available um, on the Camelot catalog, which is called hoist field. And we call the new field text. So basically we are name, we take the JSON, field called name, we uh, create another JSON object containing a field called text with that content. And then we send the result in messages. Note that I've not used anything from Apache Camel here. I've just used Camelet uh, as a, in a pipeline of steps. I create this and um, when this is started, so you will see now the beer source besides the, the, the Twitter source. And these two integration have scaled down to zero, but when this will start up, you see that these two integration will start receiving messages. And soon I will receive also some name of peers and this, uh, yes, uh, delirium tremens and the yet imperial stout name of peers inside this um, Telegram chat. So this is how it works. Both Twitter and beers are pushing message into this channel and then both integration are printing something. This is Telegram, this in the logs. This is how it works. This is really, really, really cool. You have created your own camelet. So as a last step, I would like to contribute this camelet to the catalog. How do we do? You go on GitHub, Apache Camel Camelets, and then add a file. So create a new file here. Nothing more, nothing easier than this. You call this uh, beer source.yaml, you just copy and paste the content of this. And you, can, you cannot commit directly, um, but you need to create a new branch. So you create, in the end, a pull request 
and we verify that everything is good and then we publish this in the um, Camelet catalog so it will appear here as the other ones what you see here this is another source like the pure one the Chuck Norris source okay let's go back uh, to the presentation so do it this is what we have done we have created the Camelet we have used it inside the OpenShift console and then contributed to the screen catalog so do it um, yourself if you have an idea if you have something that can be useful for other people even if there is not an equivalent component for that, you can contribute, you can still contribute the Camelot uh, for a specific use case that you have in mind. So just go and contribute. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. See you again. Bye.